morning, how are you today? It's Wednesday. We're reading in uh, the book of Galatians, a very critical part of it. And by the way, in case you live in the tri-state area, there's a pastor's fellowship coming up this Friday. You call or, or visit brooklyntabernacle.org. If you're a pastor, associate pastor, and you want to be, have a free luncheon, we're having it. Get there and just sign up. No cost. No cost. This Friday, which would be the 7th, it give you the time. We begin at 10.30 in the morning at 17 Smith Street. If you want to fly in, we had people, I mentioned the last one we had, we had someone from the state of Tennessee uh, or North Carolina fly in a husband and wife who were discouraged. And they had time of worship and praise. Then we went to another facility to eat. And we've now struck up a friendship and we're trying to encourage them as they've laid out their situation. So remember that. Pastors, leaders, luncheon, the seventh, this Friday. Did you know that as I was going through college and starting to get serious about the Bible and about the Lord at times, I backslid regularly too, truth be told. And um, when I would read this part of, of the uh, Galatians. Walk by the Spirit and you will gr not gratify the desires of the flesh. What does that mean, walk by the Spirit? And I grew up in a church where they used only the King James and the Spirit was spoken of as the Holy Ghost. So that didn't help me in terms of understanding anything about this passage. How can you be led by a ghost? Or is it a force? You know the force is with you. How do you walk by the Spirit? We found out what the sarx is, the flesh. That's the old nature that's still around. Just like when uh, the Israelites came and possessed the land uh, of Palestine, they went into the promised land. There were enemies there. And they remain partially there. God wanted victory over all of them. But there was, they were always there. Some people say, no, I had an experience with God where all the enemies were wiped up. I don't even have a fleshly nature. I'm not even tempted by the flesh, covetousness and lust and sexually and, and laziness. And I never have a tendency to just give in and just do nothing and hang out when I know I could be serving someone and reading the Bible. Like, come on, give me a break. Just give me a break. I haven't met that person yet. Now people claim that and then you meet them and you go, yeah, well, hate to break it to you, but I see a little sarks showing. We all have to battle with that, deal with that. No, don't plant that in people's minds. It's not victorious in Christ. Yeah, it is. If we walk by the Spirit, we won't fulfill the desires of the flesh. Listen again. Walk by the Spirit, you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the, grat let's notice, the flesh has desires and the Spirit has desires, the next verse says, and they're in opposition to one another. Listen. For the flesh desires what's contrary to the Spirit, capital S, and the Spirit, capital S, what is contrary to the flesh. You mean like there's two people in me? Yeah, more or less. There's the old Jim Simbla, but he's got to be crucified daily by the Spirit, or he likes to rear his ugly head, and trust me, it'd be ugly. Ugly head. But the Spirit is the only one, the Holy Spirit, who can give me victory over that ugly Jim Simbla. The only humility I'll ever know is the, what the Spirit produces because my, I tend toward pride. I tend toward selfishness. I know the old me. I, you know how selfish I can? You don't want to even know. You wouldn't listen to these lessons I give you if you knew how selfish I, I can be. Before I was really serving Christ, I didn't care about anybody. Yeah, but I'm going through a lot. Hey, suck it up. Go get through it. That was me. 
No, you weren't like that. Yeah. That's why I know Jesus Christ is real. I actually have concern for people and weep over people, and I know it's not me because I know me. You get it? So that's the divine tension that's in our lives. Every day, we have to start and saying, Holy Spirit, you guide me, you lead me. Take control of my thoughts further, even my desires, even the beginnings, the origins of my longings. Did you know that Jesus can give you that through the Spirit? Did you know the Holy Spirit? As we yield to him, as we feed on God's word, he can give you desires like you never had before. Why do you think people who were selfish as could be leave uh, the comforts of home and go to a mission field? Under hard circumstances. You think the flesh put that in them? Like, yeah, I want to go over and, and, and be in dangerous areas and not have clean drinking water. I just can't wait for that. No, that's the Lord. So, who are the most mature Christians? The one who are most guided, led, sensitive to the Holy Spirit. How before we knew Christ, how do we live? We were just listening to what the old man said. Boast. Oh, yeah. So let me tell you, just cut school and just lay down and just hang out or smoke some weed. By the way, I just went by somebody on the way to tape this. Is weed the nastiest smelling thing? In the apartment that my wife and I live in, not to bring up personal problems, but smoke, someone smoking weed above us or below us, we had to call the security desk and say, tell someone to please de-weed because this thing is all up in our living area. But see, when you're by the sarks, the flesh, it's, it's just what... Self-gratification. Sacrifice for no one. Give money in an offering. Come on, you got to be joking, right? I need the money. I don't care about anybody else. No, but this is how the Christ life is worked out on a daily basis. The Spirit in charge. And guess what we're going to learn? The Spirit produces is fruit. Let me give you the first fruit, love. Some people think it's the main fruit and everything else is subsidiary to it. So here's, here's, here's what Paul is saying. The flesh does not like what the spirit wants you to do. Like you feel this desire. Read the word now. You know, the flesh goes, no, you don't want to read the word. Remember, you got to call your friend. Remember? Oh, yeah. You never had that battle. Don't make it all the devil. I have to face up all the time and say, Jim Simbola, you scoundrel. No, Jesus. Jesus, I say yes to you. Let the Holy Spirit guide me today. Let's do it. Amen.